Hi everyone, Chris here. Today I'm going to show you how to do a soil texture test. Probably wondering why? Why know the texture of your soil? Well, what you may not know is that plants have specific soil requirements. The percent of sand, silt, and clay particles determines the soil's texture, helping to determine if it is, for example, a sandy loam or a silty clay or others. Knowing this gives us a clue as to which plants will do well in a particular soil. For example, this beauty, purple sage, prefers a more sandy, well-draining soil, not one with too much clay. So you'll have more success in your garden if you choose plants that fit your soil texture. To better explain, soil comes from weathered rock and consists of three main particle sizes and shapes, sand, silt, and clay. Sand is the largest particle. These particles are round and are about the size of the end of a number two pencil. You can easily see the individual particles. In fact, think about sand at the beach. Sand makes the soil feel gritty and also because water passes through it easily, sandy soil doesn't hold the water very well. I mean, think if I were to put sand as ping pong balls in this container and poured water through, there's so much air pockets that that water passes through quickly. Silt is the next smallest particle. Silt particles are also round, but much smaller. You'd need a microscope to see the individual particles. Silty soils are slick and slippery when wet and kind of like flour when dry. Lastly, clay, it's the smallest particle size. In fact, it's so small, you'd need an electron microscope to see the individual particles. Clay particles are flat and like a plate instead of round and sit on top of each other. So clay soils have an extremely high water holding capacity because water has a harder time moving through them. So let's get started. To help, I have this great worksheet to guide you through the process. But for now, follow me for some of the general guidelines. The first thing you're going to want to do is get some soil from your yard. Now, I have a lot of mulch in mine, so I had to push that mulch away to get down to the mineral soil, right? And if you can, sift it to ensure that you're removing a lot of the organic matter like branches, sticks, and leaves, and things like that. Also remove some of the larger rocks until you get down to the, the good mineral soil. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water to my soil and start to mold it. What I'm trying to do is create kind of the consistency of putty. All right, looking good. So the first thing I'm gonna see is if I'm able to create a ball. If I'm not able to create a ball and it just falls apart, then I've got sandy soil. But I clearly don't have sandy soil. Now I may still have sand as part of it, but not all of it. All right, so the next, the goal is to create a ribbon of soil and see how long I can push it over my finger until it breaks. So you're gonna wanna get kind of a consistent width here. And as I start to push it using my thumb over my forefinger and pushing it, pushing it over and it breaks at about one and a half inches. So what you're gonna note is whether it breaks less than an inch, more than two inches, or somewhere in between. Now, the next step is to put some of the soil in the palm of your hand and some water. And rub your palm with your forefinger. Does it feel gritty? Does it feel smooth? Does it feel really smooth? Depending on your answer combined with the length of the ribbon, will give you your answer as to what kind of soil you have. My feels really gritty. And let's see, I got a one and a half inch of ribbon. So looking at my very dirty flow chart here, I have a combination of sandy clay loam. That's great. I have a combination of all three particle types, which means that most plants will do pretty well in my garden. So there you have it. As I shared, it's much easier to follow the worksheet, so feel free to download it at treepeople.org slash learn at home. See you next time.